Okay, so we'll uh, we'll continue recording the uh, the presentation. So thank you very much uh, joining us today. Uh, as you can see, pretty much presenting uh, my team today will be myself, uh, Steve Walters from uh, currently in Brisbane, Australia, and Mike Tabor, uh, based in Toronto, Canada. Uh, so to kick off, uh, just we're going to do a quick introduction for the team, and then we'll, we'll move right into the presentation. So myself, uh, my name is Mornay, Mornay Vit. Uh, I've got a 30-year flying background, uh, 10 years in the uh, Air Force and uh, Australian Army flying mainly helicopters. In 1999, I joined the offshore well and gas and pretty much flew uh, in all the main continents around the world. Fairly fortunate career. Uh, and now I'm running my own company called Thought Process Aviation Services. It's part of the global network of companies, as you can see on the top right hand screen. Uh, and uh, we're focusing on a lot of animated safety briefing videos for the offshore oil and gas, and also a lot of uh, animations now for looking at for the digital online training programs, and we'll, we'll fill you in as we go. Uh, I'm not sure, Steve Walters. Uh, Steve, are you on the line? I am indeed, Mornay, thank you. Uh, over to you, if you can just quickly give you yourself a little background with your impeccable background. <laughs> Certainly. Well, good day or good evening. Uh, hello, everybody. So my name is Steve Walters. Uh, I was about I was a military pilot for about 25 years and a flying instructor. I then spent three years in the prototype environment. I have an accident investigation background. I've been a, a fully SASI member for about 30 years. And I have a, a, an industrial psychology background. And my current uh, focus of research is on the acceleration of expertise Thanks in the aircrew. Uh, I spent some years as, a, as an aviation advisor with Shell and some years as an aviation advisor with Petrobras. And uh, with both organizations, one of my primary roles was to generate overall survival equations for operators and uh, clients alike. Uh, and that has continued to be uh, part of the focus of my work. So uh, been in the offshore industry for just close on 30 years now. Uh, and uh, God be willing, many more years still lying before me. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Stephen. I'm just quickly going to admit a few people into the briefing. Uh, yeah, Steve, uh, as we will see shortly from one of the uh, areas that we've done a lot of work on, Steve has done a phenomenal job of analyzing uh, accidents dating back three dec decades. So all of the offshore accidents in great detail, and we'll share that a little bit later. Over to you, Mike. Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, like Mornay and Steve, I have a former military background with the Royal Canadian Air Force. Um, from there, I moved into safety and survival training and uh, began a career in uh, research. Uh, I did an undergrad in psychology, a master's in kinesiology, uh, interdisciplinary PhD in human factors, psychology, and industrial engineering, and then completed two postdoctoral fellowships in human performance. And uh, really the, uh, the experience from delivering the uh, offshore safety and survival programs is where my focus has lied mostly in the research. I've published over 25 peer-reviewed journal articles uh, based specifically on safety and survival and focused primarily on underwater egress. And I uh, published a couple of chapters and a book on, um, on egress. So uh, we'll pass it back to Mornay now and uh, we'll start going through the presentation. Thanks, uh, Mike. Um, yeah, as we can see from, from our, our launch uh, title there, um, this, this uh, program, the Digital Basic Offshore Safety and Survival, which we call DBOS, uh, is pretty much aligned with the BOZ. Uh, when I say align, uh, we wanted to move away from, to, to sort of say this is a PITO program. Uh, so the DBOS reflects uh, in a greater detail what the BOZ would have provided you up to now. Uh, and the Helicopter Ditching and Survival Training Program which is a little bit of a mouthful, the HDSDP, that will reflect all of the practical UART components. So we'll, we'll dive right into, into that uh, as we go along. Welcome to this new Digital Global Helicopter Ditching and Survival Training Program, HDSTP. It has been developed in conjunction with a group of professional companies 
who specialize in the delivery of digital theory materials and practical training. The HDSTP is specifically tailored to address the unique operational conditions found in the offshore industries, including oil and gas and wind turbine generators. The program integrates findings from over 20 years of leading edge human factors research and international aviation accident investigation reports. The material included in this program has been developed in such a way that it meets and exceeds current international industry standards. By including state-of-the-art 3D animation, the HDSTP is designed to be the new globally standardized benchmark for completing online helicopter ditching and survival theory training. Morning, we can't see the video. Contact us today to discuss your individual company We're requirements. Welcome to this new digital... So it's so, gonna see... While Morning's figuring that out, um, Obviously, the uh, technological uh, constraints for Zoom has uh, has decided that it's not going to allow us to show the video at this point. But what we'll do is uh, we'll just continue on. Uh, if Mornay can get the uh, rest of the slide presentation up. Global then... helicopter ditch. Uh, there Welcome we go. Welcome to this new digital global helicopter ditching and survival training program, HDSTP. It has been developed in conjunction with a group of professional companies who specialize in the delivery of ditching theory materials and practical training. The HDSTP is specifically tailored to address the unique operational conditions found in the offshore industries, including oil and gas and wind turbine generators. The program integrates findings from over 20 years of leading edge human factors research and international aviation accident investigation reports. The material included in this program has been developed in such a way that it meets and exceeds current international industry standards. By including state-of-the-art 3D animation, the HDSTP is designed to be the new globally standardized benchmark for completing online helicopter ditching and survival theory training. Contact us today to discuss your individual company requirements and to translate the online training into any language. So that was just a small marketing video that we've uh, developed to, to get the uh, program into the marketplace and to uh, sort of looking at uh, this, this new dimensions that we've looked at uh, designing the program. So when we look at the rationale of where do we come from that we wanted to create the, the new uh, DBOS or HDSDP, uh, let's just focus on a couple of things that we, where we started from. And uh, just I need to admit a few people here in the room, uh, I need to do all this. Um, yeah, so we're going to just look a little bit of focus here on where we've started and the, the whole motivation uh, behind us to creating this new digital uh, DBOS and HDSD programs. So we want to focus our attention on, on the Super Puma accident that happened in uh, 2013 uh, in Sambra, Shetland. Uh, there was obviously a significant event that uh, again rocked the offshore industry. Uh, there were four fatalities uh, and obviously lessons learned. Um, from that uh, accident, the UK CAA with a lot of stakeholders uh, generated the CAP 1145 that obviously raised uh, 32 actions and 29 findings uh, to raise concerns with various array of, of things that was going on in the, uh, sorry, does that get me for more people? Looking at uh, elements that was involved with, with the accident. Um, and then subsequently, recently, the new uh, update on, on the, the progress report on the safety review of the offshore public transport uh, they raised cap 1877 that really provided a great summary of where we're standing as of today. Now in that, in that uh, report itself, this question was raised. Um, if you can see this question at the bottom, have the recommendations and actions, actions in the offshore review cap 1145 been adequately implemented and have these achieved the objective of improving the survivability 
of passengers and crew following an accident. Now, we, we believe from the opinion, we are from the opinion that has not occurred. There, there are still a lot of areas that's unaddressed and we want to take the opportunity to, to run through that in a little bit further greater detail. So when we looked at uh, the CAP 1145 and the CAP 1877, we're pretty much looking at the, at the same dynamics of an organizational accident. Organizational accident where various components of uh, the accident was obviously contributed to the accident. Not a single failure, but a whole array of stuff that, that happened. Subsequently, so it's more people joining. Subsequently, uh, from the report, it, it's, it's very evident that a lot of work has been done around a couple of things that, that I want to discuss very, very briefly. Uh, looking at helicopter airworthiness. Uh, there's been a lot of progress now with helicopter air, airworthiness, with new uh, exit window designs, with door operations, enhanced floats with automatic deployment, life rafts, and a whole array of stuff that I'm, I won't bore you with the details. We'll make the report available uh, for, for the CAP 1877 and 1445. I'm sure uh, in your industry you would have reviewed that in great detail. We also looked at better equipment. So obviously along the way now, since 2014, a lot of new equipment has been introduced by uh, various uh, Survitec, Vikings, and, and all, all the likes, PP, LEPP. Uh, so that's, that's been a great improvement for, for the passenger uh, survival, survivability from the equipment point of view. We obviously looked at uh, all of the regulations and some of the industry bodies like Apito and Ali Offshore uh, joining the collaboration to improve safety. There's been a significant push from all these organizations through a regulatory uh, and an operational point of view that uh, wanted to address also in their own uh, field, address some of the concerns that, that obviously came out of these uh, accident case studies. When we looked at uh, one of the contributing factors of the, of the accident in Sambra, obviously a lot of focus shifted towards the pilot as well. Uh, pilots looking at standard operating procedures, which now we call the flight FCOM, that looks at standardizing procedures for different aircraft type and different manufacturers. So the FCOM has also been a great, great, great initiative from Ali Offshore and with the OEMs to publish the FCOM, which provide standardized uh, operating procedures for automation, stabilized approaches, simulated training, uh, assessments of pilots' uh, competencies and so forth. But as we can see on the picture there, there's, there's a lot missing. The, the puzzles that, that I've left out on the picture, there's something missing in all of this efforts we've done so far. Have we actually looked at the passenger? Have we actually provided the passenger with an adequate training program from a digital point of view that can prepare them for a real case scenario? Um, Obviously, all of these uh, elements have looked at offshore operations and how we can, can, can provide a safer environment to operate the aircraft in during, during normal operations and during an emergency. So that's the main aim of all of these initiatives is to create a safer offshore environment. But what we need to focus on and what the DBOS and the HTSTP will do very, very extensively is look at this component. When we look at the organization on accident and all the failures that occurs around an offshore accident, the human element is a very critical part and we need to look at that. So I'm gonna hand over to Mike now and just discuss a little bit about uh, the DBOS and the HTSTP, how that will address the, the passenger, uh, you know, survivability in the back of the cabin. Thanks, Mornay, for covering that. And <clears throat> as I've mentioned uh, previously, I've spent the last 20 years investigating human performance related to uh, emergency situations, primarily in helicopter uh, events, but also in emergency response for the oil and gas industry and some marine as well. So <clears throat> as Mornay had mentioned, covering the, the human element is the primary focus for us in the HDSDP and the DBOS and having a look at what information is available how organizations uh, utilize the information that's reported in accident investigations or standards that are put forth and the research. So if we don't integrate the human factors research that's being done, and in fact, I've been uh, privileged enough to be able to do research specifically on accidents like the Sambro or the Cougar um, 491 event, 
and been able to break down every component of those um, events to be able to investigate those empirically, look at uh, crash attenuating seats, look at seat harnesses, look at snag hazards, look at the emergency exits. And we'll go through some of that as we get a little bit further on into the presentation. But basically our focus and our, our primary goal is to make sure that there's enough information provided to the individuals that are going to be uh, using the, uh, the practical experience in a real situation and this transfer of tacit knowledge so that's the knowledge that we all have from experience in the past so each and every one of you joining us on the call today has some sort of involvement in safety and survival training or has had in the past the information that you have in your head doesn't necessarily get translated out into the course training standards uh, and and that's the goal is to try to make sure that that important information that subject matter experts have, they use as internal checklists to decide what's important uh, to focus on in the training. We wanna make sure that that gets out to everyone and we standardize that. We come together collectively and think about exactly what's important, what's not, integrate the research, the standards, the improvements in safety, and make sure that everybody's on the same same page when we're uh, deciding what we're going to focus on for the practical training. And although it doesn't seem like it's important when we have different instructors training different materials in a different organization or even in the same organization, what ends up happening is people that are coming to do our training will focus on the things that the instructor highlights. So if they don't necessarily highlight a specific component of a brace position or an egress technique, then the individuals will never focus on that. If they don't highlight information on emergency response evacuation process for the oil and gas industry or for marine industry, then the individuals won't focus on that. And people don't know what they don't know. So what we need to be able to do is try to bring all that information into a concise and clear project and that's the HDSTP and the DBOS. Uh, so that's that's basically the goal and we'll we'll move along here now Mornay to the next one. Yeah um, just to recap on, on that I think uh, what Mike has emphasized greatly the benefit of the program we've plowed 20 years of research that not only Mike has done in the industry but 20 years of research in this environment We've plowed into the program. So this will be the, the first time that, that a program has been developed with, with concrete research that, is, that we've been embedded throughout the program. 